Hey everyone, it's me, I'm back. I'm sorry I've been away for a while. I've been working on a really, really exciting project which I can't wait to start showing you guys. So I'm gonna be releasing that at some point soon. If you haven't already, link is in the description. There it is, I Unite. Go and enter your email address and as soon as it launches, I'm gonna post a video on here and I'll email you all. Uh, anyway, today I wanted to just make a quick video tutorial on CSS buttons. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and open up Photoshop. Um, and we're gonna have to go File, New, and we are going to create our uh, Photoshop document. The width doesn't really matter, um, so we can just call it 100, um, or literally anything you want, because um, we're gonna just repeat it, basically. You'll see later on. The height is the thing that matters. This is how high you want the button to be. We're gonna make it 50, which is quite big uh, for a button. Uh, well, I suppose it's medium. So 100 width and 50 height for the pixels. Go ahead and press OK. Um, and there you can see our sort of, our, our, our image. This is what's gonna become our background. So this is layer one. We're gonna go ahead and fill it with a color. We're gonna fill it with black. It doesn't really matter what it is. I'm gonna, sorry, just minimize this so I'm not dragging the cursor around so much. So layer one, we're just gonna fill it as I said, um, any colour really doesn't matter because we're going to do a gradient overlay on it. Just make sure it fills the whole thing. And we're going to go to the layer one, double click out, uh, and we are going onto the layer style, gradient overlay. Now, um, you want the darker colour to be at the bottom and the lighter colour to be at the top. And it can be any colours you want, so we're going to just do sort of a green. We're going to start with maybe a lime green. Um, and sorry, that's the, the bottom colour, so we're going to want to make it a bit darker, actually. We're going to make it a darker green. Um, and, um, just play around any colours you want. Again, dark on the bottom, light on the top. Um, we're going to find that lime green we had before, because that's quite nice. There we go. Um, but literally, just sort of anything you want, anything that you like as a gradient. Um, I've actually pre-designed a few um, and, and set them as my presets. So I'm just going to go for this one. Um, I quite like that colour. Um, yeah, that green I think I'm going to go for. But again, you know, any colour that you want, it could be literally anything. That's quite nice, so I'm going to go for that. Um, obviously you can see dark at the bottom, getting lighter at the top. Um, and that just sort of gives it the, the sort of standard button effect. Create layer 2, and what we're going to do, we're going to go onto our brushes, we're going to make it uh, diameter of 1 and hardness of 100%. We're going to make it a white. And if you hold down on shift and then drag your cursor along, um, it should make it a solid line. Shift that up to the top, uh, the very top. Um, and then what we're going to do, we're actually going to duplicate it. Duplicate the layer, press OK, um, and then shift it down one and make the opacity 50%. So obviously you can see it's a subtle sort of, it's going from 100 to 50 to nothing. Create layer 3 over the top of everything um, and drag the selection tool um, just over about half of it. Fill that with white um, and yeah, make sure it's half half filled. Then go to the layer, uh, to the layer's opacity and change that to uh, 20%. And you can see it's now sort of added a glass effect. Uh, we, can, we can make it a bit more subtle actually, you can make it 10 or 15. Uh, we'll make it 15. There we go. So it's a subtle effect on it and it makes it look more glass, modern, stylish, chic, whatever you want to call it. Um, so that's our, our button background basically. So we're going to file save as, we're going to save it to the desktop, but we're actually going to make a new folder. We're going to call this folder website, um, but, but again you can call it any anything you want, this really doesn't matter. We're going to save it as menu um, and we're going to save it as PNG. Actually we're going to we're, uh, yeah, we'll save it as menu, as a PNG file. Press save, uh, interlays none, and if we open up the website folder, you can see it's just got that menu image inside. Now what we want to do, we want to make it, uh, we want to make a a, um, a darker, darker button background for the, um, for when you hover over it. So we're literally going to change the gradient style a bit, we're going to make the, the darker colour can can uh, stay the same, but the lighter colour we're going to just make a tiny bit darker. Um, so this will add sort of a really subtle hover over effect when you put your cursor over the button, you see it changes a bit. Um, so we're going to save that one now uh, into the same folder, PNG, and we're going to save it as menu underscore hover, oops sorry, underscore hover. 
Um, and there we go, we're going to just go, go ahead and save, interlace none. If we open it up again, you can see now we've got our two background images for our button. Our button. Um, so we can close Photoshop, we can save it as a PSD if we want to edit edit it in a later date. Uh, make, it, make it easy, the PSD in there, but you don't need to. Um, and now it's time to get coding. So we're going to open up Notepad or whatever text editor you use. Um, just do the default tags, HTML head, title, this is my menu. Sorry, I don't know why I keep saying menu, button. This is my button. But you can use these buttons as a menu. It looks really good, I would say. <laughs> uh, link rel, style sheet, uh, href, and style. Um, actually, we're going to call it menu.css. Um, again, button, sorry. If you put literally anything you want .css. Um, close the head, open the body. Um, and we are going to just do a little bit of styling, literally for demonstration purposes. This You don't need to do this. This is just to, to place the button sort of in the center of the page. So we're going to do div style equals center, uh, sorry, align center. Align center, there we go. Uh, close that one. And margin top, so that's going to push it down a bit. We're going to do 50 pixels, uh, 100 pixels actually. Close that one. Um, and then close the div and then everything inside that div will have a margin of 100 pixels at the top and it should be aligned in the center of the page. Close the body, close the HTML, press file, save as and we're going to save it into the website folder again um, and we're going to save it as menu dot, sorry, button <laughs> dot HTML but again it can be anything you want just as long as it's got dot HTML on the end. Press save and there you go, you can see it now. Uh, it's going to open up in our default internet browser. Mine is set at Chrome. Yours might be Internet Explorer or Firefox or whatever. So open with um, Chrome or uh, anything. So double click it and you can see it's opened. Um, and obviously there's nothing in it yet. So there was sort of no point in doing that, but we'll, we'll just sort of minimize that. We're actually going to drag it into a new. Yeah, there you go. You see there's nothing in there. Um, but this is where a button is going to appear. Now we want to go back to uh, Notepad um, and we're going to create a new document. This is the CSS now. So we're going to do, we're going to make it a custom uh, tag, I suppose. Uh, so we're going to call it dot button um, width. This can be any width you want. Uh, we're going to just make it 300 pixels. And the height, this is the thing, remember we set it the height of the image is 50 so we've got to make it 50 pixels for the height background uh, image and uh, we want to do uh, uh, we want to make it link to our menu that we just created so URL um, and in there we're just gonna put we're just gonna put menu.png because that was the, the the menu button that we uh, the menu background that we saved in from Photoshop then we're gonna do background repeat and we just want it to repeat so we just literally just background repeat repeat um, then you can add other styles. I'm actually going to show you a really cool website. It's really simple, just border-radius.com and uh, this generates the code. Um, this is sort of a, a really effective tool. I use it a lot. Um, it's sort of a lazy way of coding but actually it, it works so there's no disadvantage to it. You can change the uh, the radius, you can just change it on one of them, so that's 10 and the rest are 5, but obviously we want them all to be the same, so we're going to set them all for 5, copy the code that it generates, make sure these are all ticked for cross browser compatibility, copy that code, um, and then literally just paste it into our CSS um, within the button um, within the button tag, and then we can go ahead, we can close the button, and press file, save as, and we're going to save it again into the website folder as button.css because remember that's what we linked um, linked it to in the HTML. So if we go ahead um, and open up uh, the HTML again in Notepad, we're going to do a new thing: div class button. Close the div um, and press file save on that one. Re refresh it in our internet browser, and you can see our button has now appeared. It's got the uh, the corners on it. Um, the border radius corners and it's, it's looking more like a button. I don't know why I haven't it aligned in the center actually, text align center, refresh, no, I, if I had time I'd play around but I, that doesn't matter, but it's, it's uh, we're just going to get rid of that actually. But there is our button, it's now appearing which is great, um, obviously it's got um, 
the body radius that we set, um, uh, the background that we set. So that's looking really nice. What we're going to do now is go back to the CSS, and um, we are going to actually I'm going to ch I'm going to change the background color to a light gray just to make it stand out even more. Um, this isn't something you need to do. File save, but it. it just adds a bit more. There we go. You can see it's looking really nice, standing out nicely. Um, and we're going to just add a border to our button now. And we want the border to be a, a because we made the button green, we want it to be a dark green color for the border. So if we open up Photoshop, select any color that you sort of want that you think is good, copy the, uh, copy the HTML code, for the, uh, the code for it, paste that in border, we want to make the border one pixel, solid and the colour. So file, save, if we press uh, press F5 or refresh, you can see it's now added the border colour. And we can actually, we can afford to make that a bit darker, so go back to Photoshop um, and make it a darker colour. But again, it's it's really up to you what, what colours you select. Um, you know, have a play around. Um, I'm just going to make that a bit darker. File, save the CSS, F5, and you can see the border's now a bit darker, and that's looking really nice, really nice and sharp. But obviously, when you hover over it now, it doesn't change at all, um, and we want to add that effect in. So in the CSS, we're going to do button, and the uh, uh, we're going to do button, hover, background, image, uh, URL, and this is going to be menu, hover.png. Um, and then uh, you can see there we go that's menu hover um, and then we're going to close that file save um, and then press refresh um, and you can see now when we hover over it it changes oh it looks like there's a problem with the image let's go back into the CSS and check that I've got the title the the tag right uh, sorry CSS menu ah oh, it's supposed to be an underline sorry uh, so file, save, press refresh, and as you can see now, when you hover over it, um, it goes. Sorry, there's a bit of a delay on the computer record, but basically, when you hover over it, it changes to menu hover background, and we can just make it a bit, bit nicer. We can do cursor is is the pointer. Um, press refresh, and when you hover over it, you can't see on my computer record tool for some reason, but when you hover over it, it'll show the cursor is a bit different as as the uh, as the pointy cursor. Uh, now it's time to add the text onto our button. So we're going to do font family is Arial, font size um, 18 pixels. Again, this is all completely up to you. The color of the, the font, we're just going to make it white. Um, and then we can uh, text align, make it make sure it's in the center. Um, press file, save. But again, you know, this is all up to you, this stuff. Now in the button, inside the button div tags, we want to just add the text that we want to appear in the button. So this is my button. File, save, press refresh or F5, and there you go, you see the uh, the text is now in the button. Uh, we want to push it down a bit so it's centered vertically as well. So what we're going to do, we're going to add padding to the top of our button. So padding top, um, and we're going to make padding at the top 15 pixels but we want to take 15 pixels off the total height, so we just change that to uh, 35, file, save, and refresh, uh, and there you go. You can see the text is now vertically aligned and uh, horizontally aligned, so that's looking really nice. We can add a bit of styling now to the, the, the text. Um, we're going to change the color to a, a black, for example, or a dark gray, so 333333, three, 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 three. Um, and we're going to do some text shadow, um, we're going to play around with text shadow a bit now. So zero pixels by minus one pixel, so that will be text shadow just above the text, and we've made that a white. So if we press refresh, you can see the colours now black or dark grey, and the shadow just above it um, is white. So we can actually make that just a a, a light grey to make it a little bit less, uh, a bit more subtle. So if we press refresh, there you go. You can see there's there's text shadow, and that sort of gives it an indented effect it it looks like sort of the the text is embossed into the um, the button but again play around with the colors you know see what works for you um, I'm going to try making the text shadow and what am I going to do the yeah, I'm going to make the font 
colour white and then the text shadow a light grey, see what happens there refresh and there you go, that's, that's sort of a nice effect on it, we could make the text shadow a bit darker actually so 555555 file save press refresh and yep I'm happy with that that's our button and as you can see got a really nice effect when you hover over it um, you'll be able to see it if you put it into action it doesn't look so good on the computer record um, but that's the tutorial anyway enjoy making your buttons guys um, thank you very much for watching as always please don't forget to rate comment favorite and of course subscribe bye for now